Hello lassies and laddies, it's Uncle Hamish here. Uh, this is the first in a series of videos about SC Controller, a program for configuring and controlling your Steam Controller and other uh, input devices as well. This is, uh, as I say, the first in the series, so I'm going to be just having a quick look around the application for you and giving you a few uh, view descriptions of some of the features. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, obviously this is a Steam controller. <laughs> well, maybe not obvious to everyone. <laughs> and uh, the program was originally made to allow people to use a Steam controller without using the Steam uh, program itself. So I uh, tried a couple of different programs, including uh, Antimicro and SC Controller. Uh, Antimicro, although it's good and it does support multiple devices, uh, isn't, it wasn't actively uh, maintained. Uh, SC Controller, however, was absolutely magical. Um, brilliant uh, interface, especially for, obviously, the Steam Controller. Uh, but it has so many cool features and also as of uh, late last year, uh, sorry that would be December 2017, it supports other input devices as well as the Steam Controller. Uh, it supports all the, all the input uh, mechanisms of this Steam Controller device, so pads, sticks, buttons, uh, including the uh, double button of the uh, triggers because these triggers on the steam controller for you if you don't know they go down a certain distance as an analog controller and then they click there you go clicky click so there's a two-stage thing there so you can actually assign both of those separately for an example uh, you might have a game where you you zoom in a weapon so you could use the trigger to zoom in and then make the final click to fire. It also uh, understands the uh, gyroscope, so you can use the gyroscope as an input. As far as the interface goes, it has lots and lots of cool features. Um, obviously you can see here you can uh, sort of visually assign all the controls. It has uh, profiles here. Now I've actually reset this so that there isn't too much on there for when I start showing people how to set things up but I, I do have profiles backed up elsewhere um, and the three that come with it are desktop where your uh, thumbpad acts as a uh, not a mouse, uh, trackball including haptic feedback if I highlight the actual control you, you can see what they are so uh, you've got a trackball there You've got uh, your arrow keys are controlled by the little joystick. Your mouse wheel spins up and down, left and right, with the uh, D-pad. Uh, well, it's the pad on that side, which has a sort of D-pad on it. Uh, and then you've got your buttons and stuff as well, and a few keyboard keys. And that brings me on to uh, the next thing, is that it can emulate, as well as uh, controller emulation, it does mouse and keyboard emulation which makes it really powerful um, so it emulates as you can see here uh, keyboard mouse trackball and the, the important one probably Xbox 360 controller now obviously if you switch off emulation here it then becomes just a standard controller which is the way it comes out of the box and if you go into Steam it will show up as a Steam controller with emulation enabled it'll show up as whatever you've got as here. So usually an Xbox controller, which is absolutely fine for 99% of games anyway, because that's what they look for. They look for a standard and you know standard controller. Obviously you can make your own profiles. Um, if you are going to change anything, it's better to make a backup of the profile. So for example, if I go into the desktop one, click on new profile, I'll get the option here. You'll see obviously to name the profile. I can make a new empty profile where all of these will be unset. Uh, or I can copy the current profile. So, so you switch the profile you want, then hit new profile. If I say current profile, you'll see there that the current one is desktop. And uh, you see it's automatically filled in desktop copy, but let's call it something else. Let's call it... Uh, image desktop, let's go with that. Okay, click OK. And now we have that same profile ready to go, but we can change it without doing any any damage to the uh, the base desktop configuration. So nice and simple, and straightforward. There's two. There's, sorry, there's three ways to switch profiles. You can switch profiles with the main interface, which is here, which is what I've you know what I've been doing. Okay. Or if you uh, push the middle button, the which is the Steam controller button on this one you will then get that pop-up that you see in the bottom left of the screen. And you can choose, uh, it keeps the three most recent, recent profiles listed there for you. Uh, you can also go in 
and check out all the profiles available. It mentions auto switch. Uh, um, no, there's nothing assigned at the moment, so I'm not going to be able to show you much there. But that's the third way that you can switch profiles. So one is the pop-up menu, one is in the main thing, and the other is in, if I show you on settings, auto switcher, you can set rules uh, for whatever the active window is. If it's one of the ones that matches the, the rules, then the Steam controller will be switched to, or whichever controller in fact, will be switched to the profile that you've saved for that. Uh, I haven't really tried that yet, I need to, I need to do that. That'll be something for a, a future video as well, so it's something new to us both. Uh, very quickly show you other things. You can import and export the profiles. Uh, you can import from Steam. So any if you've already got a Steam controller and you've been using it with Steam, but you, you want to try something with a bit more power and a bit more flexibility, you can bring in what you've already got into this. Uh, you can import previously saved profiles from the program itself and you can then and you can save a profile out. I'll quickly go through a few of the settings. I'm not going to go through them all because there's a lot here as you can see. Uh, basic stuff is you can set up your on-screen display. So if I go to classic instead of reloaded, let's just pop that up. With classic, you'll see that it changes the pop-up style. I quite like the reloaded. Uh, color presets, again, they're fairly obvious what they do. But I like that. Uh, or you can actually set all the colours and things your own. And the keyboard, on-screen keyboard and the menus can all be set from there. Uh, you can set the colours to your heart's content. Uh, I'll come back to that one. Right. Um, uh, you've got enable and disable a few different things here. System tray, rumble support. And uh, you can op automatically disable the emulation when you close this program down. Now, I'll explain more about the emulation in the future. Uh, essentially, emulation takes over your devices that it knows about. So that's always the Steam controllers that are connected and anything else you've set it up with. One of the main things I want to show you in advance, though, is this thing here, Enable Input Test Mode. So if I switch that on and go back to the main screen, uh, you'll see that then when I move... Oops. Hang on, let's switch off the, the pop-up first, the OSD. Uh, you'll see now that I have a visual indication of all the controls, what they're doing. So, uh, you know, you can test things out, you can, you can make sure you know which controls which uh, on a device that isn't uh, one of the pre predefined ones. Uh, again, I'll explain that in the future. Uh, but it lets you see where everything is. And make sure, obviously make sure things are working as well. So what have I done? I've just been <laughs> in the menus there, right? Okay, let's switch that back on. There we go. And go back to settings. So that's quite a handy thing to have. Um, as I say, for the Steam controller, it's more just of a test of each thing working. But for uh, other devices, it's a really handy way of knowing which thing you've mapped to what. This um, is the controller's box. Now, Originally, it would be just Steam Controller, so it says there enable Steam Controller support. That's obviously never switched off because that's the you know the core function of the the uh, program. And so Steam Controller is always enabled, uh, but you can also enable HID and EV Dev, which are two different ways of reading input devices on Linux. Mm -hmm. And you can also enable uh, now DualShock Four, which is the PlayStation Four controller. Uh, and you'll see here there's other controllers and there's a, a full system here to register a new controller. I will show you that in future as well. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that's been a good uh, introduction to SC Controller for you. And uh, I will see you next time. And if what we'll do next time is we'll make a profile and do some uh, button configuration. Thanks very much. See you next time.